Welcome back everyone to Live World Snooker.tv and this is the last first round match in this Antwerp Open to take to the table. There's Judd Trump, the defending champion. He was involved in one of the great finals I think we've ever seen in this tournament last year when he beat Ronnie O'Sullivan 4-3 in next to no time. Both players were at the peak of their powers or close to it and what they produced was a mini classic. Today, well, he starts off against Pasakorn Sawanawat from Thailand. Thank you. It's best of seven, first frame. The Trump to break. We've had something of a history of repeat success in continental PTCs. Mark Selby comes to mind, and also Neil Robertson, who's won back-to-back -back in Poland. So will Trump do the double in Belgium? So Anna Watts obviously is the underdog, but he won't be any pushover. As always, attacking Judd Trump, that's what makes him such an entertaining player to, to commentate on and to watch. When he's at his best, he's absolutely superb. Just about enough room past the pink. One. And the first ball of the match is spotted by the tie. He's 26 years of age, turned professional originally six years ago. And last season was his best. Reached the final qualifying round of the Shanghai Masters. And also the quarterfinal of a Players Tour Championship event Eight. in Germany. Ball. Touching ball here. Only safety is a viable option. Yes, Pasakorn Suanawat, he qualified for the main tour again last season by winning the 2011 Asian Championship, overcoming India's Aditya Mehta 6 2 in the final. And he actually reached the World Amateur Championship final in 2007. Before losing out to his fellow tie, Atasit Mahiti. So you can tell from that CV that he can play a little. And so far, Trump just can't get going. Two reds missed from distance, both undercut. Oh, but what a blunder there. Now, if he hasn't left a red with a pack having split like this, Sawan so what has been really, really fortunate. Now, there is one there. The red closest to the pink goes in. And what, what a good early chance for Trump. You saw a brief glimpse there of 
Pass a corn to Anawat always reminds me of a fellow Thai who's a sportsman in a completely different field. If you follow the golf, you might know what I'm talking about here. There's a Thai lad called Prom Misawat who plays on the Asian tour predominantly. And they look very similar. Twelve. Golfer and snooker player. Many technical characteristics shared between those sports, one of which is that it's vital to keep your head down on the shot. Also to deliver either 18. cue or club as straight as you possibly can. And for the Nine. most part, Trump does both of those gloriously. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Knew he was going to make contact with that red. Okay, the positive is that he's removed an awkward red from the side cushion, but recovery pot required here. Oh, yes, and missing the ball colours, that was the main thing for him positionally. And now, nicely on the pink, this has to be regarded as a frame winning chance. Forty eight. Well, that was very surprising indeed. Chose to take the middle of the two reds, clearly because it availed him ideal position on the blue. Wasn't the easiest pot, but even so, shouldn't have missed it. One. So what a bonus this is for Suanawat who comes back to the table. 40 behind, but with all of the colours on their spots and all of the reds out in the open. And that miss, though, was frankly unforgivable. And you would assume, heavily assume, he won't get another opportunity to redeem himself. One. Just before the match began, I was Seven. just taking a, a peek at the, the world rankings and Judd Trump has got every chance, with a good finish to 2012, to overtake Mark Selby at the top. 
The gap was substantial at the start of the season, not anymore. 15. And the first frame definitely will fall to the left-hander. Look at that for a classy shot. Thirty-five. It looks great, but you know, early on in a match, indeed, on a day when he could play three matches, don't want to damage your tip with an exhibition shot. Front top, thirty-eight, and frame number one. Good frame from Trump. Okay, he missed already, should have potted, but breaks of 48 and 38 have quickly and decisively given him a 1 0 lead over Passacorn Suwanawat in this first round match in the Antwerp Open here in Belgium. If you're just joining us on Live World Snooker.tv today, welcome and thanks for your support. This is going to be a tremendous event as it was last year when Trump lifted the trophy. All first round matches are now either underway or complete. The vast majority of them are in the books, by the way. If Trump comes through this, which is overwhelmingly likely, he will play either Jamie O'Neill or Jack Lazowski in the last 64. Lazowski leading that one by three frames to one, and that should be a really interesting affair because, if you don't know already, Trump and Lazowski both from the West Country, moved to Essex to further their professional snooker careers to get better practice in superb facilities down at the Grove against top quality opposition and they decided to share a flat together so the two flatmates and firm friends could be actually doing battle in the next round. Other scores to tell you about. Stuart Carrington leads Phil two. Barnes 3-2. Dechuat Poojang, who is Sawanawat's fellow Thai, he leads Fergal O'Brien 3-2. Jeff Cundy from Scunthorpe in England, he's 3-2 up on the 1997 world champion Ken Doherty. It's 2-1 for Tom Ford over Mark Joyce and 3-1 for Martin Gould over Christopher Keoghan. And so within the hour, or certainly within the next couple of hours, all of the first round matches will be over. Our next match, by the way, here on Live World Snooker TV, which will come up at around, well, 10, 15 minutes after the end of this one, it's going to be Luca Bressel from right here in Belgium against Stuart Bingham. Last season's Australian Open champion. Another one to look forward to. What?
Seven. Actually, to get you a little more update with one score I gave you, Tom Ford actually now leads Mark Joyce 3-1, and it looks like being a 4-1 victory for the man from Leicester. Pesakon Savanovat, seven. Well, Savanovat needs to tighten up, doesn't he? If he doesn't, his trip to Belgium will be severely curtailed. One. Confirmation that... Tom Ford has just beaten Mark Joyce 4-1. Four, one. Well, he tried to go into the bunch as we all thought he would. Just a little too wide. Seven. When a ball is so deeply in the jaws of a pocket like that, it really is tough to judge. Kind of shot when you're going over a large amount of green bays to pot a ball down the side cushion. Never easy. At least Sawanawat has done no damage in terms of leaving anything on. I can confirm, by the way, that his compatriot Dechuad Pumjang has beaten Fergal O'Brien 4-2. Interesting, actually, that Trump, from distance so far, every time he's missed, it's been just undercutting slightly, but undercutting nevertheless. One. Sorry, foul. Oh. Well, well, well. That was unfortunate. To take the cue ball into the middle pocket at that angle, you can't really legislate for that. And this time, Trump misses again, but overcuts. Maybe an alignment overcompensation. It's going to be a busy end of the year for Judd Trump. Next weekend they all jet off to the International Championship, the inaugural event in Chengdu, China. 
massive world ranking tournament that is in terms of both prize money and world ranking points in fact there's never been a bigger ranking event held outside of the United Kingdom 625,000 pounds the total purse and the ranking points on offer are equal to that of the UK championship Trump returns from China there's a PTC event in Bulgaria to think about also one in Scotland before Christmas and he's got the defense of his UK championship title at the start of December throw into the mix he's continued efforts in the Premier League you have to think he's going to be one of the favorites for the title there and before the the annual festivities he's going to play an awful lot of snooker <coughs> we're not fully firing yet Fourteen. Fifteen. When James Waltoner came on the scene in the late 80s, won the World Amateur Championship in Sydney, Australia, and then took the professional game by storm. There was a massive explosion of interest in snooker within Thailand. Lots of pro events out there. Many, many clubs in the big cities. Oh. That's a concert one about 15. No, the black mist off its spot. And we all assumed that Watana would be the first of many world class players to emerge from the land of smiles. Not so. Other players have had success, limited success on the tour. The Chira New World Amateur Champion. But nothing on the scale of what Wattener achieved. Winning world ranking events, invitation tournaments, and climbing to a career best third in the world rankings. So what we thought was a guaranteed production line of world-class Thai talent hasn't materialized as yet anyway now I just wonder what about China everyone's saying within 20 years they're going to, to take over the game in terms of playing personnel maybe that's going to be the case 17 but here's a cautionary tale Ding Wei broke through when he won the China Open in 2005 as an 18 year old since then, bear in mind, seven years, Four. have they produced another world ranking event winner, apart from Ding himself? No. Five. 
So although it's overwhelmingly likely that China will produce many, many world beaters in the years to come, as yet, apart from Ding, none has emerged. 82. Thirty-three. Forty. Forty-one. Looks like a very good angle to get into the two reds, and he needs to because Trump 30 ahead, so the black would make it 37. One more red required. Oh. Positional cannon judged to perfection. 48. 49. 56. Well, shouldn't really have any positional ambition here. Just roll in the red, make absolutely sure of the frame. Well, that's, I think, what he tried to do. 56. And he missed it nevertheless. But even though he's only 45 behind with 35 on, three snookers needed. One red left always gives you the option of a free ball. Pass the corner to one art. Concedes. And so Judd Trump with breaks of 48 and 38 in the first frame and 56 in the second. Takes a 2 0 lead. Halfway towards a place in the last 64 of this Antwerp Open. Okay, then in between frames, let me give you the, the very latest that's going on around this arena. Well, Martin Gould is now a 3 2 up on Christopher Keoghan. And it's 3 3 Ken Doherty against Jeff Cundy. As I said a little while ago, we're almost at the stage where the first round is going to be complete. If you were with us before this match began, you will have seen what I thought was a really entertaining contest between Ding Junwei and Sean Murphy. Ding coming through by four frames to two, and he now plays Matt Selt from England. Thank in you. the last Spring 64. Judd Trump, the break. In the bottom half of the draw, which is being predominantly played today, some really interesting second round contests shaping up. Alan McManus against Mark Williams. Graham Dot against Andrew Higginson. And just to repeat our next match here on the main match table, which is Belgium's own Luca Bressel against Stuart Bingham. And at this rate, those two better start getting their cue out of their cases because Jet Trump steaming on. Good angle on the black to go into the reds, it seems. Should he so choose? You get the impression this match will be over fairly sharpish. Terrible kick encountered there though, took all of the pace out of the cue ball. And that's why he's short on the loose red on the right hand side of the bunch he played for. I think that sorts things out, don't you? What a shot. Impudence.
the black pretty much out of commission at the moment. Thirteen. But the ball colours are all there. So is the pink to a certain degree. And the blue right now will be Trump's best friend. You might have seen from that angle that the pink won't go past the yellow into the left-hand ball pocket as we're looking at the table. Nineteen. Here's Trump just taking a look and realising what we already knew. And encountering a rather fierce bounce off the top cushion there didn't help. Twenty-five. But that does. The pink goes to the green pocket, no problem at all. And after he's potted this, he'll get it back on its own spot, back into the business end of the table. Doesn't like the angle though. Twenty-nine. Now here we see the ambidextrous skills of Judd Trump. Mm. Thirty. Should he have played that right-handed? Just didn't get hold of the cue ball, did he? Well, that was positionally unlucky. 35. To come through the gap there between the first and the second red of the three. Any kind of contact and he would have been carrying on the break, surely. As it is, I think it's break over. Drop from 35. Well, if Trump does come through, he definitely will play his flatmate Jack Lazowski because Jack has beaten Jamie O'Neill 4 1. You look at the side on that. Not just to pop the red, but to avoid collisions on the way back up the table. Well, again, choosing to play right-handed, of course, the positional aspect of that shot was a lot more simple than the one he attempted before on the blue. And now from here, 3-0 should be pretty much a certainty. Oh. Thirteen. Eighteen. 
90. Tried to squeeze past the the extreme edge of that red rather than make contact with it. No problem anyway though. 24. Twenty-five. Trump sixty in front as he consults the scoreboard. Fifty-nine on the table. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Well, another. Incredible bounce off the side cushion there. That's two or three we've seen three in more. the match so far. That from 33 and frame number three. Classical one to one what remains in his chair. Judd Trump remains in total command of the match. He's leading by three frames to nil. One more needed for a place in round two of the Antwerp Open. Other matches currently in progress. Well, Mitchell Mann, the amateur from Birmingham, he leads Liang Wenbo. China's number two by three frames to one. Jeff Cundy and Ken Doherty are 3-3, three, three, but Doherty on a break of 79 to open the scoring in the deciding frame only one red left and so the former world champion will go through to the second round to take on Scott Donaldson from Scotland and Martin Gould the last time I told you was having trouble shaking off Christopher Keoghan the amateur well that remains so because Gould who led 3-1 there has been pegged back to 3-2 uh, there's nothing in it at the start of frame number six. Frame number four. A couple of second round matches have begun. Welshman Andrew Paget, who qualified for the Crucible a couple of years back, he leads Robbie Williams 1 0. And Alan Taylor, he's 1 0 down to Norway's number one, Kurt Mafflin. What a shot again that was, not just the top, but the way he controlled the cue ball. Beautiful. Found the gap off the top cushion, perfectly on the black. Eight. Nine. Does a red go to the middle pocket? No. He would be looking at this one if it did. Oh, yes, beautiful. And Trump has held the cue ball as well, just about. But he didn't manage to hold the cue ball on that occasion. A red will still pot. But this kind is never easy. Oh. 22. Well done. Trump missed one like that into the opposite top pocket on a break of 48 in the first frame.
27. There's a, a chasm of 86 places between these two in the world rankings. As I've told you, Trump is number two, Sawano at number 88. And there's that old snooker cliche, the rankings don't lie. Well, on occasion they do. But not on this occasion, it seems. Thirty-five. Not easy with the cue ball so close to the side cushion, but it was a ball I think everyone expected him to get. And had it gone in, almost certainly, frame and match to Trump. As it is, just a little bit of hope for the Suwanawat. One. Well, not bad, that. Okay, hampered queuing for the pink to the middle pocket, but even so, it's only mildly hampered. I can confirm, by the way, that Ken Doherty did beat Jeff Candy. It's now officially a 4-3 win for the Irishman. So just this match and two other first round contests to finish off. Fourteen. Twenty one. Twenty-two. Twenty-nine. The blue to take someone up level in the frame. This is his highest break of the match so far already. Hit that a little too thick though, even though it went into the pocket, and that's why he's short on the red he played for. Cutting back into a blind pocket, this is missable. Well, I thought he was taking on the red to the middle pocket there. Didn't realise the red would go past the blue. He skewed it well. And now, the whitewash, which looked inevitable at one point, could well be averted. 44. Thank you. 
51. Now 24 ahead, so I know what that means. He still needs both of the awkward reds. Nicely in behind the last red. But even though this is really close to the middle pocket, don't take it for granted. The entrance to these middle bags really tight. Oh, just about. I thought the note was going to catch the far jaw and stay on the table. Just about flopped in. Well, given the way the match had gone, this has been a very good break indeed from Suano Ott. 69. The highest of the contest. 71. Seventy-eight. Not quite enough for a century, which is a pity because this has been a really good effort. Eighty-three. Eighty-nine. Well done, Pasakorn to Anawat. Judge Trump isn't the only one who's providing entertainment for this Belgian snooker crowd. Trump leading by three frames to one, but when he was 35 points to nil ahead in frame four, a whitewash looked pretty much on the cards. But he missed a red with a cue ball close to the side cushion, awkwardly close, and Suanawat did the rest. 96 clearance, under the circumstances, top draw. So what about the, those other two outstanding first round matches that I was telling you about? Well, Mitchell Mann still 3-1 up on Liang Wenbo. Liang... 37 ahead, I think it is. No, he's not. He's eight points behind with green, brown, blue, pink, and black on the table in the fifth frame. So, man has the chance there to claim quite a notable scalp. Right at the bottom of the draw, it's Martin Gould against Christopher Keoghan. Gould leading 3 2 there. But Keoghan, 48 points ahead, with one red left in frame six. So buying an extraordinary escape from Gould, that one is going to go 3-3. Three, three. The amateurs are coming back from 3-1 down. And we've got a number of second round matches just starting out now. Ding Wei has taken the first frame against Matt Selt. 
Neil Roberts knew you might have seen here on Live World Snooker TV earlier this morning. Recording a 4 0 win over an amateur. Well, Robertson has taken a 1 0 lead over the Welshman Daniel Wells. Kurt Mafflin leads Alan Taylor 1 0. Ivan van Veldhoven, one of Belgium's finest ever players, even though he never turned professional. He's involved in the first frame against Thabchaya Anu. And Welshman Andrew Paget leads Robbie Williams 2-0 now. Yes, Robertson beat Joe Steele from England 4-0 this morning, and it really was the quintessential David and Goliath clash. But in this one, Goliath steamrolled David. I think it's really good that they have these amateur qualifiers in the couple of days before the tournament begins for real. But sometimes the amateurs who come through well, they're like lambs to the slaughter against the top players. And Mr. Steele was against Neil Robertson three or four hours ago. Trump now will be even more determined to finish this one off as quickly as he possibly can. He knows he should already be putting his feet up metaphorically. But if Suana Watt can win this one, all of a sudden Trump will start to feel under a little bit of pressure. One. Well, the referee just moved the pink with a the hand there. I don't know what that's all about. Surely she's going to put it back. The pink visibly moved as she put the marker in there. <laughs> just when he seemed to have a little bit of momentum, so I know what. Giving it away with that miss. One. Well, it worked for Trump before, i.e. breaking up the reds from a red. It's not normally the way to go, though. You take a risk by doing that. And this time the risk has backfired. Can confirm, by the way, that Chris Keoghan has gone 3 3 with Martin Gould.
the trunk one. Well, there wasn't a great deal he could do there in terms of total containment of Suana Watt. Realise that if you put the cue ball in this left-hand corner of the table, OK, he would leave reds. But nothing easy. If he takes this on, it really is a pressure ball. That was a really good pot, and a little unfortunate that the pink has stopped the cue ball pretty much on the bulk line, meaning that this yellow has to be respected. Well, a really good victory to tell you about for Mitchell Mann, the amateur from Birmingham, England, who's beaten China's Liang Wenbo by four frames to one. Not the first amateur to prevail over one of the game's better-known players this morning. James Cahill from England beat Rob Milkins, his fellow countryman, 4-3. Well, Seventeen. Eighteen. Well, the way that Suanawad played that shot tells us the black goes. Comfortably. And it looks like the plan to follow. So what looked like a breeze Five. for Jed Trump at 3-0. Might turn out to be 3-2 in a few moments. Well, I think someone up there realising he could get through to a red directly took that one on, eliminated any risk with the plant. I was telling you that when Suanawat reached the final qualifying round of the Shanghai Masters last season, he beat several fine cubists. Most notable in that number was the six times world champion Steve Davis.
And if the blood goes in here, he will have been responsible for the two highest breaks of the match. Seven. Just slightly got into the cue ball too much, but he's now 65 points ahead with only 59 on the table. So as it stands, Trump needs a couple of snookers. I think if the black goes in, Trump won't bother coming back to the table. He might not anyway. Just looking a little concerned. So Hanawad beginning to, to thunder them in. I must admit I haven't seen him play a great deal, but what I have seen, the last couple of frames have been the best back-to-back -back I've witnessed from Passacord to Anna Watt. Eighty-one. Eighty-two. century from here every credit eighty seven and a century now seems likely. Ninety. And I think the last couple of frames just serve to underline the current strength and depth in professional snooker. Bear in mind, Passacorn Suwanawat currently stationed at 88th in the world rankings. Ninety nine. One hundred and ten. Fantastic stuff from the tie. Pass it to Anuwat. 
117 clearance following a 96 clearance in the previous frame the way he started off the match you would have assumed Trump would win this 4-0 all hands down all day not so now Trump not guaranteed even to win by any score because Passacord to Anamot is playing really nicely and he's back to trailing only 3-2 how quickly a match can change Action going on all around this Antwerp arena. Predominantly now their second round matches taking place. Neil Robertson has taken the first frame from Daniel Wells. Matt Selt and Ding Jin Wei. Well, Ding won the first. Selt has just equalised. Kurt Mafflin has quickly taken a 3-0 lead over Alan Taylor. It's also 3-0 for Andrew Paget over Robbie Williams. Simon Bedford has taken the first frame from Tiang Pen Fei from China. Frame number six. It's 2-0 for Feb Chaya Anu, one of Pasakorn Suanawat's fellow countrymen. 2-0 for him over Ivan van Veldhoven from Belgium. And the match we've been mentioning for quite some time now, Martin Gould against Christopher Kyogen, still in the early stages of the deciding frame. And it's Kyogen, who was 3-1 down there, who leads by 18 points to 5. Well, all of a sudden, Trump looking a wee bit vulnerable. Yes, undercutting a red from distance. That's been a common feature of his game. Certainly in the first couple of frames he was doing that on a on a regular basis. Eight. Of course, if Suanawat can get back to 3-3, then I suppose the, the pendulum of pressure might shift a little because he would then have high expectations. Mm. 
Maybe it's already shifted. Twenty-four. I think they're the red and the blue close together are blocking Sawanawat's path to the red over the pocket. Well, the red and the blue were blocking the path, but One. Trump pots the red off the side cushion expertly, and although he doesn't get any position on a colour, he can lay a pretty good snooker, mind you, with the pack so close together. Trump. One. This isn't one that should overly intimidate his opponent. Good, but that was a pretty box standard escape there from Suana Watt. Didn't really have to worry about the pace of it either. Very important for Judd Trump to come through the match here and have a good run in the tournament because he's down at 21st at the moment in the players to a championship rankings. In this series of events so far, this season hasn't really pulled up any trees. One quarter final, a couple of last 16s to his credit. So he needs to get some significant points on the board because 32 players, 24 from the European Players Tour Championship and 8 from the Asian equivalent will qualify for the Grand Finals in March next year and there there's going to be a first prize of a hundred thousand pounds ball close to the same side cushion that cost him in frame four on 35 Mr. Red from a similar situation sure. there so Anamot got in with a 96 clearance and the whole match was transformed now Trump there potted the black really nicely considering the queuing but just suffered a kick not a directional kick that affected the pot, but it took a lot of the pace out of the cue ball. Nine. From 16. Nowhere near. Red left to the middle pocket. And the way he's played in the previous two frames, you have to think Suanawat here will be fancying his chances of taking this to a decider totally unexpectedly. One. Eight. 
eat. Applause from an adjoining table did not break Suano Art's concentration. Seventeen. One. Early on in the match, so I know what missed a couple of 29. rather routine blacks off their spots. Oh, and there it was a routine red. That's a concern about 29. Bad queuing. You saw his bridge arm move before he hit the white. Just about getting the cue ball back into Bork. Then he took a contact on the last red there. Might have been expensive for Suana Watt, as it is. Nothing left on. But the way the reds are, the way the colours are, he can't afford any mistakes. Has to try and keep Trump at bay. Oh, and Trump did well there too. To get a wide enough angle to take the cue ball on the inside of the blue back into the safety of ball or, or at least the the relative safety theoretically a red is on here
Well, I can tell you this is the last first round match to be completed in the tournament. Now, how about this for a, a bit of news? Chris Keoghan, the amateur, has come back from 3-1 down to beat Martin Gould. The well-known, well, certainly over the last couple of years, fixture in the top 16. Keoghan has won that match. 4-3. He now plays Tom Ford. Oh, and what a slice of fortune for Trump there. Took the risk, missed the red by some way, and to get a snooker in behind the green. Wow. That is so timely for him. So cruel for Sir Hanawatt. Holland this to Trump for. Well, contact will be made this time. But what kind of contact? Well, it could have been worse. He has left a red to middle. But that means it's hampered queuing for Trump. Very hampered. Well, playing safe was definitely the right option there, but not the most penetrating safety shot. Well, so I don't want fortunate. But that really is only the equaliser when you consider that Trent missed a red to that same top corner pocket and fluke snookered so I don't him behind the green a little earlier. He was just looking to see whether the red will pass the red just to the right of the blue into this top right hand pocket. If it does, it's only a very narrow gap. Now that transforms the frame. Purposely went into red and blue. It solves two problems that. One, the awkward red. And it puts another high value colour into the mix. Trump's previous shot was one he would never have contemplated had he been 32 in front, rather than 32 adrift. Well, one good part here, and Sawanawat could be taking this match against to 3-3. Three, three.
Well, I thought he potted it. Cued it really nicely, obviously. For safety's sake. Sensibly. Screwed the cue ball back into bulk. So, so close. Now that from Trump might have looked reckless, but I don't think he had a great amount of choice in the matter. And now the cue ball has come to rest. For him, is entirely acceptable. It could have been a whole lot worse than that. Just to reiterate just how quickly a match can change. When Trump led 3 0 and by 35 points to nil in frame 4, a 4 0 whitewash looked almost inevitable. Before that potentially costly double kiss from Suanawat, 3 3 was looking the most likely scenario. So can Trump avoid the tension of a deciding frame finish? Well, he didn't want to make contact with the red there. Did the right thing to pot the blue, freeing up another pocket. And at least he's got an alternative red to the middle. Seven. Well, not for the first time in the match. Trump encountering another very explosive bounce off a side cushion there. Wanted to be on the blue, but on the opposite side of it positionally. And now, this kind of pot from mid-range, with so much on the line, even for him, not easy. Nice. Made to look so, though. And I think Trump's been unfortunate there. The other red could have come out into mid-table quite easily, as it is. It's run a little awkwardly. Well, at least Trump's back in the frame, trailing by just seven now. And here has the ability to lay a really good safety. 
a wall of balls across the middle of the table helping him. The Trump 25. And using them. Can Serrano Watt squeeze the cue ball between blue and black for the red directly? The answer is no. And that could, well in fairness, it should be his last shot of the tournament. I can't believe it. I think he suffered a kick, but even so, it wasn't the, the best cued shot he'd ever played. Yeah, you saw the red jump in the air. And the second prize for Trump, a fluke snooker. You know, they say the balls don't forgive when you miss a chance like that. You have to wonder whether Trump will get another in this frame. When the cue ball came off, the last cushion it made contact with, Trump jumped in the air. He was a little concerned it was going to hit the pink full ball. He didn't. He just glanced off the pink. And so Wanawat finds himself in another snooker. And now another golden opportunity for the world number two. I don't think Trump can quite believe the springiness of these cushions and to be honest I have sympathy with him. The bounce is definitely inconsistent and now this pot on green a lot more pressure filled than it should have been. Well done and well held but is he straight on the yellow? Four. Six. You've got to think it's all about the green. Nine. Nicely done. Trump, two points ahead. He needs brown, blue, and pink. Eighteen. Just lost the cue ball a tad there. The pin shouldn't pose any problems though. And it doesn't. And so Judd Trump had quite a workout there. One we didn't expect he would have. When he led 3 0 in by 35 points to nil in frame four, it looked as though he was going to start the defence of this Antwerp Open title with a whitewash. As it was, though, Passacorn Suwana Watt contributed to the entertainment with breaks of 96 and then 117. In the end, though, Trump coming through by four frames to two, and he now plays his flatmate and good mate, 
Jack Lazowski in round number two. Next up here on Live World Snooker.tv on the main table, it's going to be Luca Bressel from right here in Belgium up against last year's Australian Open champion Stuart Bingham. And so action will resume here on LiveWorldSnooker.tv in around 10-15 minutes time. Just before I go, let me give you the very latest...